the literacy levels of Ghanaians have been ranked lowest worldwide, according to Professor Stephen Adai. Only Niger was below Ghana in terms of quality of our basic education. According to the educationist, Ghana can only redeem itself from the shame by improving the quality of education at the basic level. He alleged that teachers are only babysitting students instead of imparting knowledge. Right, uh, we're fortunate to have Peter Party, NT Executive Director of the Institute of Education Studies, joining us. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and thanks very much uh, for your time. Uh, this very sad uh, report, which puts us at the bottom, that's bad news, right? Yes, but then we have to put it in context that this is a report that was released in 2018. Mm. Yeah. So it means that we, between 2018 and now, uh, there have not been any global ranking, but that's instrumental, I mean, especially if we're at the bottom. Where, where are we going wrong? Um, our, our basic education system has been bedeviled with a lot of challenges, and uh, over the years there have been attempts to uh, revive it because um, we, we are, we are uh, practicing what we call the uh, F cube, free mm -hmm. basic compulsory universal education, and that is what we are, we are doing now. However, there are other things that we need to put in place in order to map up or to push up the quality of And we're of not educa doing. Yes. Which other things are these? One, we have to take a critical look at the teacher's welfare. Apart from that, we have to also look at the level of management, supervision, and uh, monitoring at the basic level. In terms of supervision and monitoring, we are lacking, and, and that is one of the reasons why um, when you compare the private schools to the public schools, you mm. will see that the private schools seems to be doing better because the supervision and monitoring there is up there as compared to the supervision and monitoring. So, so if I get you right, if we look at what's happening on the uh, educational front, strikes here and there, the recent one is TUSAG, and which is very likely to affect academic uh, work are the polytechnics are these major uh, these uh, demonstrations and strikes also an integral part of downgrading the quality of our educational system? Yes, exactly. Because you see, uh, the 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 products of education is felt after a long period of time. Mm. Now, when students enter the education system, they are supposed to go through series of activities that are supposed to push them into a certain uh, level that mm. would open their minds and enable them to contribute to the development process. Now, if these things are interrupted with some of these activities, strikes, uh, and all those things, it means that one, most of the times they are not able to finish what they are supposed to go through, or two, the morale of the teachers who are delivering the content to the students uh, 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 becomes very low. And when it happens that way, it means that they are not going to deliver as they are supposed to deliver. You remember that um, in 2016, there was talk about reduction in the level of absenteeism of, of teachers in basic schools. One of the things that we, we saw when we went around was that although that le the level of absenteeism, we have managed to reduce it, the teachers go to school and they were not doing what they were supposed to do. And all this boils down to the issue of supervision and monitoring. So let's look at the curricula. I mean, when we look at the uh, education ranking, we're not just looking at uh, who teaches what and at what times, whether they're present or not, but the actual curricula. How does uh, our school's curricula compare to uh, global standards? Yeah, so over the years, we've been dealing with the old curriculum, which normally we, what we call the chew and pour. Mm -hmm. The students just come in, we push them through one or two things, the teacher feeds them, mm -hmm. and they go and write their exams, and they're supposed to pass, and then they, they complete whatever they're supposed to do. Now, what we the, the new curriculum that has been implemented seems to enable the student to think critically by himself, to open the creative need, ability of the child, and mm -hmm. also to expose him to varied um, methods of doing things so we, if we are able so to we don't do know that, the outcomes uh how much this is going to help us in global rankings yet. no we are we are not going but to but you're confident that this will go a long way in changing the scope of our education the document is superb what we document need to, is superb yes. we have very superb documents exactly that is where i was going what we need to do is to focus on the implementation provide the needed resources mm. we talk of digital literacy how are we going to do that 
there is a lot of discrepancy between the urban child and the rural child. How are you going to bridge that? We have to provide these supporting infrastructure to enable the kids get the needed experiences that they need to get in order that they will be able to push up in, in, in the education. If not, the document remained uh, it will remain a document in the books, but will not be able to translate it into the current right. policy. So, that so we whilst want. we talk about teachers, I know there is also uh, teachers learning curriculum. There's also the issue of us uh, uh, school feeding caterers who are agitating to get their monies paid. The, the whole idea of school feeding was to uh, keep the numbers uh, in school, to bring those who cannot afford a, a meal to be still be able to come to school. You think all of these are reflecting very badly on uh, teachers' performance? and the concentration of children while in school? Yes. One of the reasons, the research was that led to the introduction of school feeding was that the students were coming to school. You know, we, we opened the system, so uh, capitation grant, free basic education, everybody was coming. But when they come, most of them were not able to stay because of the issue of feeding. So we introduced that one to maintain them in the system. But unfortunately for us, we politicized it. And when the political actors came in, we've not been able to get the full benefits of the school feeding program. And that is why we are where we are now. But that is a very important part of education system. If you look at all countries that have implemented school feeding program, it has added to improving the quality of education in their basic level. Unfortunately, in Ghana, politics will not let us get it. Right, so a quick one. Uh, before you go, uh, let's look at long-term planning of our education. I mean, I, have, I spoke with uh, Dr. Nana Eskebi Asante, and uh, he compared Ghana to South Korea in the 60s, where per capita GDP uh, were quite equal, but South Korea transformed its country by embarking on a long-term planning for education, 10 years for basic education, 10 years for uh, secondary education, 10 years for tertiary education. Do you get the sense that what we need is a long-term plan? Yes, and of course, we've been able to put together the strategic education strategic plan from 20, 2018 to 2030. What we want to push is that all manifestos from the political parties in terms of education, should emanate from that particular strategic plan. If you're able to do that, we'll be able to hold on to some of the gains that we are making now and stretch it for a longer period of time. One thing we have to understand is that the fruits of education takes a long time yeah, to, to, to bear. To and, and if we are not careful and we continue to change the system by our political orientation and political understanding, it's going to make it difficult for the kids to benefit from the investment you are making in education now. That's why all of us have to come together and push that every political party abides by their strategic plan and make sure that their education manifesto hinges on that. At the end of the day, we'll be able to get the best out of our education system. Peter, thank you very much uh, for coming. Peter Pate, NT's Executive Director of the Institute of Education Studies.